Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I am Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Today, an equal rights icon is remembered and honored. Also tonight, the numbers in CNMI finances are down. And hospital service looking to expand. In sports, we feature the first day of a first ever run in Saipan. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Join us on Wednesday, January 18th, as Flame Tree TV and KSPN 2 News present a very special Saipan premiere for two short films at the American Memorial Park Visitor Center. Show starts at 7 p.m. Buen Camino is the story of an epic solo walk across Spain. We hit the trail for 37 days and 1,000 kilometers and walk in the footsteps of Charlemagne crossing the Iberian Peninsula on the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage. Along the way, we find equal doses of adventure, friendship, and a lot of life lessons. Immediately following, Mountains 12, an unexpected cancer diagnosis on a small Pacific island leads to a continuing tale of friendship, perseverance, hope, and adventure as a band of 12 brothers tackle an unforgettable journey. Spirited, funny, and heartwarming. Admission is free, doors open at 6.30 p.m. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Good day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, January 16, 2023. Dr. Martin Luther King is remembered by many people today for his work, principles, and hope for an equally better America. KSPN speaks with a longtime educator who shares his thoughts on this day. Ambrose Bennett is a retired teacher, a former CNMI Board of Education member, and one of those who pushed hard for Martin Luther King's birthday to become an official holiday in the NMI. Bennett says MLK Day shouldn't just be recognized in the U.S. mainland, but in the Pacific region as well. Dr. King was not only fighting for black people, and that's something that needs to be truly understood out here in the Pacific. Dr. King was not fighting just for black people. He was fighting for all people of color. And if a Chamorro or Carolinian was in the U.S. during those days, they would have gone to school with me. They would not have gone to a white school. They would have been called the N-word, or even worse, just like me. Dr. King is known as one of the most prominent leaders in the civil rights movement who fought against racism, discrimination, and equal rights for all people. 
Bene believes MLK Day should be celebrated just as all other holidays in the Marianas. I related this to Governor uh, Palacios and the transition time at this time just made it too difficult. And I totally understand it. But I hope that in the future that the governor will be leading on this day just like he does on Veterans Day and all the other holidays because they are all important. As all of the holidays, someone died, more, more or less. Someone died, even for Citizenship Day. We have citizens who have passed and never been recognized. Uh, so Dr. King's uh, holiday is one for everyone, especially all people of color. Bennett was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. He marched with the late Congressman John Lewis and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The words of Dr. King lives with Bennett until this day. Uh, Dr. King actually changed me. I was more of a Malcolm X person. I was very radical. And I could remember him talking to us because he would come to Memphis and talk to SNCC. I was a member of SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee that was led by the late Congressman John Lewis. And he would talk to us often in Memphis. And one of the things that he impressed upon us was that we can't be like our oppressors. So, and that really what kind of changed me and it put me on the right path of nonviolence. The CNMI first recognized MLK Day as an official holiday in 2006. It wasn't an easy task, but members in the community pushed hard for it. The law was passed and signed by then governor, Ben Fittio. I stood on the shoulders of many people like uh, uh, Joe Hill, Mr. Dr. John Joyner, uh, even Mr. Neighbors uh, from Tenian, all those people way back then, and a lot of them never been recognized for their struggle because they kind of like sit in the background, but they're all hard workers. In the previous years on this day, Bennett and the group organized marches down Beach Road, reenacting the Civil Rights March led by Dr. King. Today, those activities have stopped but Bennett has hoped that the education will continue. Yes, I would like to see more education uh, uh, about Dr. King, not only Dr. King, but just the principles that he stood for is what needs to be promoted. Uh, because out of the civil rights movement came the human rights movement that affected the entire world. I want to say this as a final note, the locals would never find prosperity alone. It would be all of us or not at all. So we need to work that way, in every way. The months and years ahead will not be without hardship. This is stated in the Department of Finance transition report. Former OMB Chief Virginia Villagomez led the transition team who reported on the status of the CNMI Department of Finance. According to the transition report, the CNMI government received over $611 million of federal assistance during the COVID-19 pandemic. These funds were from FEMA, the CARES Act, and ARPA funding. ARPA funding was the greatest grant, amounting to $481 million. But the transition team says the funds is overspent, overcommitted, and stands at a deficit of $86 million. Cause of the deficit is due to unallocated expenditures related to special grants assistance and government operations. The previous administration used some of the ARPA money to fund disaster-related expenditures that await reimbursement of $48.7 million. The report says if the CNMI government receives the reimbursement, the deficit will be reduced to $37.4 million. According to the Finance Department FY 2022 annual report, the general fund is at a deficit of $37.8 million, which is mostly incurred by law enforcement overtime payment from DPS, DFEMS, DOC, and Customs in their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The recommendations from the transition team are to discontinue the 25% additional retiree pension payment until the government stabilizes its financial state and revises the ARPA spending plan with the U.S. Treasury. 
Other recommendations include revising the government budget for fiscal year 2023 and to enforce fiscal and budgetary controls. Governor Arnold Palacios announced last week that they will soon be making public the true financial state of the CNMI and the cost-cutting measures that come with it. The island's only hospital seeks expansion of services. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation is looking to expand and add health services in the hospital. According to CEO Esther Munia, one of their needs is the Northern Marianas Oncology Center expansion. What we're trying to do um, is find additional space because I know that Dr. Brett really wants to expand it and get it more available to people that really need the screening. The Oncology Center offered free cancer screening and prevention programs to all residents in the NMI. Anyone, regardless of insurance status, is encouraged to take advantage of the opportunity for early detection. Cancer can be treated if, again, if you just, you know, find, uh, get detected earlier, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're looking at people with high risk and say, hey, you know, why don't we go through the process of, of screening for, for that particular uh, cancer so we can, we can, you know, treat it. Munya says they are looking to bring in more oncologists on board and possibly open a cardiology department soon. We have a cardiologist on board that is, is wants to, to make it bigger and um, obviously we need money for it. So um, this is, again, part of the innovation planning is that we want to take a look at how we can, um, you know, make it work. Yeah. And th that, that is the need for the MRI, right? Munya says she has yet to meet with the new governor, Arnold Palacios, to air out the hospital's needs. She says when the time comes, it won't be all about funding. Just, you know, waiting for the time for me to sit down with him and, and um, you know, discuss one of the things that ways, a lot of ways that we can, we can make it better. I mean, there's just, um, and it, it doesn't necessarily all about money. Sometimes a lot of it has to do with policy changes. So I'm hoping that we can see some of those policy changes that really help the health system and the health overall in the CNMI. So it's not all about money. All right, coming up, a quick trip to Dubai and a list of things to do in a mall. Stay tuned. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. December arrivals in the Marianas up by 442%. 
The Marianas Visitors Authority reports that the CNMI received more than 12,000 visitors in the month of December. This is a huge figure compared to the 2,000 some received in December of 2021. MVA says arrivals are increasing incrementally since the commencement of the TRIP program in 2021, but it's still lower compared to pre-pandemic times. Majority of the tourists are from South Korea. Asiana Airlines, Jeju Air, and Tiway were all booked at over 95% capacity, which is the highest load factor in 2022. Other visitors arrived from Japan, Guam, and the U.S. mainland. Not many people would head to a hot, dry desert for snowboarding, but as Arcus Nelson reports, the deserts of Dubai have more than the world's tallest building. We head to the mall to do a little Christmas shopping. I know we're a bit late, but we can always get a head start. Now, I like to park close, so I head over towards the valet parking. Unfortunately, I think the Chanel staff called security on me. Pretty elitist over here. Hey, where can you buy some board shorts? My man here has a little business going. He cleans the cars for people when they are shopping. It's about 25 UAE Durham. That's the money unit they use over here. About $7. Pretty good deal. Inside, the mall is impressive, even from someone that doesn't really like malls. I head over to Louis Vuitton. I'm not looking for windows, but a screen door might be nice. Hey, maybe they have board shorts down there. Now, Dubai is pretty warm all year round, at least outside, but that doesn't stop people from winter sports. This mall has its own ski slope park with reindeer out front that sing. Check in here and grab your gear. Little size adjustment over here. Lockers in this area. Walk outside, or I guess it's better to say you walk inside, and there it is, a ski slope. No kidding, and it feels like real snow. They put little kids in these little planets and then send them over the edge. I'm told they come back. Not sure what happens if there's an upset stomach in there. Didn't find out. The lift takes you up to the top, and I have to say it's pretty impressive for being indoors. I'm a size 11, but I think my carbon footprint might be more like a size 16. Big Christmas tree here. These are hotel rooms. I guess that's ski in, ski out. You're in a mall, so you can stop whenever you get cold and go have lunch and then go right back at it. It's about $70 a day, including all the equipment. Not too busy on weekdays, but I'm told it's packed on weekends. Man, where did I park chris nelson for the channel two news all right folks don't go anywhere sports is up next need a new phone trade in now and get up to 500 dollars off our best 5g devices trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific. Better together. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Gold's Gym. And today we're going to show you a Bulgarian split squat. A fantastic lower body exercise that should be a main staple in your training. Now the first thing we want to address is the rear foot placement. Now whether it's toes on or toes off, just find what's comfortable for you. The bigger issue we want to tackle is the height of the box or bench. You see when you set up on a box or a bench that's too high, that inherently puts an aggressive stretch on the front of your hip. Oftentimes that sensation will take away from the working leg, the leg that's on the floor. And when you start to add load in this faulty position, you're bound to run into some problems, particularly if you got some mobility restrictions. So Jamila's gonna set up. She's gonna descend with control. And from there, just stand tall.
Hey golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Run Saipan's first ever Trinity Run 2023 kicked off over the weekend. Three days, three different runs, and a bunch of winners. Despite the heavy rains and strong wind, 41 runners joined the first day of the three-day Trinity Run on Saturday morning in Marfi. The first day is a 10-kilometer race that stretched from Kensington Hotel to the last command post and back. Sildri Valoria topped the men's division by crossing the finish line first with a time of 45 minutes and 39 seconds. Second place is Chad Tafflinger who finished the race in 49 minutes and two seconds. 41 seconds right behind Taflinger is Mr. Barefoot Runner himself, Chong Nam Lee, for the third place. In the women's division, Anne Bang finished the 10 kilometer race in 54 minutes and 36 seconds. Rosemary Chisato came second with a time of 55 minutes and 14 seconds. Third place, Tara Allen with a time of 57 minutes and 46 seconds. Here are the highlights from the Run Saipan Trinity 2023 Day 1.
No, 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 get away. Dr. Ron Snyder, who is the secretary of Run Saipan, tells us more about this inaugural event. This is Trinity 23. It's a three-day running event uh, based on a festival of running from the Isle of Man uh, in the United Kingdom. So uh, day one was today. It's a 10-kilometer race starting here at the Kensington Resort, going up past uh, the last command post, and then coming back to the same start. Tomorrow's a 5K up Mount Tapachau, very brutal and then a nice, easy 5K on Beach Path on day three. And for the KSPN Weather Report, Mostly sunny with isolated showers east southeast wind 16 to 18 miles per hour with gusts as high as 22 miles per hour. Tonight partly cloudy east wind 11 to 17 miles per hour with gusts up to 21 miles per hour. High 86, low 74, the humidity at 94%. Tomorrow mostly sunny east wind 13 to 16 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. High 86, low 76, the marine forecast, a decaying shear line has pushed south of the Marianas waters and will move west from there. The Tanopak buoy show combined seas of 79 feet, which are now below levels hazardous to small craft. East wind 10 to 20 knots, wind waves 2 to 4 feet, east swell 6 to 8 feet. The sunrise will be at 6.46 a.m., high tide 1.53 p.m., low tide 9.27 p.m., and the sunset 6.06 p.m. And there you have it. That is your Monday edition and holiday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you back here on Wednesday.